Why does the sound insulation sometimes decrease when a second layer is added to a wall? I did a Q&A on that one a uh, couple of days ago, and this is completely counterintuitive. I want to show you here what I mean. Like in this case, we have a single concrete wall, 150 millimeters. So I, I just have saved that curve down here. And then when we add a second layer like this, it's some wooden beams and a one layer of uh, gyps gypsum, like so. Now, you see, most frequencies are, they get an improvement. But what happens down here in the low frequency range? We got around 63 hertz, 40, 42, 44, between 40 and 45. And look now what happens when we add that second layer here. It decreases, and it decreases quite a lot. Here we got like almost 20 dB decrease here. Now what's going on here? Because this makes no sense. If you add layers, you make the wall thicker and it should in theory, it feels like it should become better, right? Yeah, it's, it's better up here, but not down here. So what's going on? This is a phenomenon called resonance. So we got like an eigenfrequency inside this cavity. And what that means is that there will be a certain frequency whose wavelength will have, make a perfect match to the space inside here. So when this concrete wall is vibrating, it's going to excite a sound inside this cavity and the sound radiates and it's going to hit the gypsum board and it's, goes, it's reflected back and it's going to hit the concrete again. And when it hits the concrete again, the next wave in the, of the same frequency is ready to be emitted down there. It's, it's like a very good example is if you have like a swing, you know, when you have a little, if you got put your a little child in the swing and you give a little push, it's gonna go out. And then when it comes back, you give another push and it's gonna go a little bit further. And you give a little push and it goes even further. And you just keep adding a little, little energy every time. And the swing will go more and more and more and more. And if we didn't have energy losses, this would go to infinity but it can't do that because we have losses. And the same goes here inside the wall also. I mean, every time the, the reflection comes back, it's gonna add up on the previous, uh, previous wave and the wave becomes a little bit larger. You know, on the, on the ocean, when you have two waves and they, they meet, then you're gonna create a bigger wave if, if they come co perfectly synchronized with each other, which you will do here for, for certain frequencies. So, Here's another example, my, my little mass spring system. So, whoops, sorry about that. When I drop this one, not on the floor, but when I do like this and I just let it go, you see it starts to bounce up and down with a certain frequency, which is dependent on the mass of this one and the spring stiffness. So, you see, I'm hardly exciting this one at all. I put no energy at all up here, and yet I get a lot of movement down here. And this is what we see here on the on the left, the, the resonance peak here. That's when we get this perfect synchronization. If I'm exciting with the same frequency as the resonance frequency of this construction, which depends on the air gap and the mass of the outer layer, then we will get a huge resonance. But when I increase the frequency, you see what happens. Now we're up here in the upper part of the curb, and here we got sound insulation. Oh, where's the camera? There, <laughs> there we have it. So that's the reason why we can have this really counterintuitive phenomena. And uh, we need to make sure when we design our buildings so that we don't coincide with this one. So we, we want to get this dip as, as low down in the frequency range as possible, and we can do that by increasing the, the air gap and the and uh, increasing the mass, but we don't want to go be lower than necessary either because it eats up valuable space and it costs more to... It, it becomes more expensive to, to build a wall where you push this one down as low as possible. So there's always a compromise. Everything is a compromise. What you can also do is you could add some absorption inside this cavity. Let's see if I can get it. There we have some. Now you see we still got the dip but it's not that bad. It's it's dampened. And that, that's the same thing that if, if we would do this, but in, uh, maybe if we do it in, in, in water, it wouldn't be able to, to go up and down as fast as this. That would be like adding a damper that 
inhibits the motion. So that's um, some of the basic parameters we can fool around with. But this is important to know. You can get a decrease in sound insulation. How crazy it even sounds, but that's, that's physics. And uh, in today's video, I just, just want to give a quick little style tip. When you have a watch and a belt, it's a good idea to, to match the medals. So it's like silver medal on both of these. And I got some brown leather on both of them. Now it doesn't doesn't have to be a perfect match because that's very difficult to find exactly the same. But even if, if it's close enough, you get a really nice look when you got the same leather on your belt as on your wrist watch and the same metal. So you don't have a, a gold gold uh, bucket. What's it called? Buckle? No, the, this thing. I don't know the word. This thing, the metal on the belt. If this is gold, then it would be nice to have a golden watch as well or silver, silver that way. And then then of course also if you add Shoes, try to find shoes with the same leather color as these, and you you will create a nice harmony. It's also a kind of, of resonance when you have the same color everywhere. <laughs> and uh, keep the questions coming. I love to answer real questions from real people. It's much more fun. Have a nice day, evening, or morning, or whatever. See ya.